Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, we relax, and we talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux open source, and basically just anything else that catches our fancy. I am Ben Stone, joined every week by Star Trek aficionado, <laughs> Joe Bryant, and <laughs> yeah. the man staying up, not quite too late, but he's drinking... His own brew, this weird concoction that we were discussing was, in the pre-show. It's yeah, he's, he, he's already <laughs> destroyed it. He has dominated the cup. That is Pedro Mateus and everyone watching us live on Twitch. What's going on? Man, I was having a good week. I was having a good week, middle of the week, until yesterday. Yesterday required a lot of adulting for one Vinstone. Because I had to sit back and think, can I afford two point two million dollar house? <laughs> <laughs> you think like in your twenties and like when you're young, you're like ah, it's a fin. It's like, what is my net worth? These were thoughts I were genuinely <laughs> contemplating <laughs> because I saw this. This, this is just oh. a straight up medieval castle for sale. In Michigan. It's beautiful. Um, it's got mm -hmm. hidden rooms. And it comes with like <laughs> two towers. Um, but I, it's way too much. Like, yes, if you're wondering on 30 year fix at 2.6, that's about 12 grand a month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now we know what Ven's uh, midlife crisis looks like. <laughs> this is frighteningly close to it, man. Very frighteningly close. Because uh, on a train I thought I was having earlier, I'm like, what would it cost to build like an Isengard tower? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, probably less. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> They're attacking the hobbits. To, what? Yeah. <laughs> Hobbiton. Dude. Anyway, that was kind of my week. I'm waiting for uh, the EVGA capture card should be here by Friday. So I'm going to be doing that video. And this is the new kit that they have. But it should be a very affordable way. USB 3, 1080p, 60 capture with 4K pass through. So I think people are going to be interested in that. And just kind of run it through its paces. And... Um, for my brothers and sisters out there that like to play around with the audio stuff, I have some vintage audio hardware that uh, is going to be fun to play around with and show off. Because uh, a lot of people are looking for a device like this, and they don't they don't know it exists. They're kind of hard to come by because it happens to be from a company that they got the thing right back in the 80s. So they're still in racks and in service today. So when one shows up, they're usually way, way too much for me to spend. But... Luckily, Guitar Center didn't know what a thing was again. So I walked in there. And <laughs> they had two. I almost just bought the other one to resell it on eBay, but I, I just bought one because I didn't want to be that guy. That's like, you know, everything's on sale at a store and you buy them all. Don't be that person. Leave like one or two for the next guy. <laughs> yes, leave that teeny tiny little bit for karma. karma. Very important. <laughs> so... What have you been doing, Jenna? You, I, I saw you were posting oh. in Discord. Steve was posting in Discord. You guys were out and about doing some stuff. Yeah, we had a great Memorial Day holiday weekend. He had a, a four-day weekend, which was so nice. I still had to work some of the days, but it was just nice to have Steve home and we could spend more time together. That was really awesome. And the big news today is Star Trek turns 55 years old today. Woohoo! And uh, there's lots of celebrations going on, including um, uh, today on Paramount Plus with host Will Wheaton. He's going to do a live uh, show with the Shut actors up, and actresses Wesley. from the show. Yes. <laughs> and that's at 5.30 p.m. Pacific today. And you can watch it on YouTube, on Twitch, uh, and on Paramount Plus, which used to be CBS All Access. <laughs> so that's the thing. But yes, today was the original airing of the original series episode, The Man Trap. And it's one of my favorites. Mm. <laughs> uh, 55 years ago, I mean. <laughs> but today... <laughs> Did we talk about it last week, Pedro, with you, that you got the, September um, 8th. You get your pookie up and working? Uh, I hadn't gotten it up and working. I always got to come up with I something was, with uh, Pedro likes to keep me on his toes. Yeah. He's like, there's two things. Pedro has got like two strange hills that he's going to die on. One, he's not going to fill in what he's up to. So we have a lead in at the beginning of the show. Two, 
filling out the schedule on Twitch. I don't judge him. Love him for who he is. <laughs> hey, uh, I figured out where the schedule was now, okay? <laughs> I changed it. It now says that I play games on Tuesday. What that game is, that's a surprise. He likes the attention, and so it's totally just not add because reply and then Discord and ask him each and every week, every <laughs> single person I want you to on Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, no, uh, the last week I was actually coming in through the Mbox um, 2. And the, um, because the Apugi duet was not, um, well, it, it wasn't behaving properly. And so uh, mm-hmm. Ven suggested to replace the um, Firewire port, the one that had a zip tie around it. Yes, that one. <laughs> so uh, I did. Um, I did that. I ended up actually br- um, destroying one of the capacitors that's in between the two pins that uh, they don't really conduct anything. They're just the pins that hold the thing in place. And uh, yeah, that that's on me. I, I, I got a little too happy with the <laughs> with the pine sill. Seriously, awesome, awesome soldering iron. Very good job, Pine. <laughs> but uh, I happened to find one that was a slightly bigger package than the original one. But it charged to about the same voltage, and it put, testing it with the... Uh, I was kind of curious, what, what did you rob there? that from? Because I, <laughs> no offense, I just don't see you having surface mounts mm-hmm. laying around. Oh, but I do. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I have quite a few of those projects ah, so, to teach okay, you okay, the surface okay. mounts. They come with extras because they're supposed to teach you that stuff. So I basically just went through all of them. It's like, how much are you? No, <laughs> how much are you? Ooh. That's about the same. Okay. <laughs> Put that one on there and it's working. You're listening. Uh, Yay. You sound good, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. To my voice coming through it right now. So it did. It, it, uh, I really hope I did nothing to annoy karma this week. Because <laughs> no, no, no. See, you, this is the first step in like uh, the Mateus mods for audio hardware. Then, you know. <laughs> 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 Black, Black Lion Audio would charge, you know, six, seven hundred bucks for that. Like, yeah, well, we mm-hmm. swapped out this uh, resistor and it really, you know, filled up the top end. <laughs> it was surface man, so we get to charge you triple digits for it. <laughs> so, some things people like to charge money for, up to and including software. And this one kind of made me scratch my head because, you know, it's right up there with what does God need with a starship? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> How do you think the space wizard uh, functions? But no, this is about pirating the GPL software. And the inherent question, can you pirate GPL software? Because as the license would apply, you are very much allowed to uh, copy, get the source code, change it, do it yourself, as long as you include the general public license, uh, everything uh, on it. You're good to go. So, Chris Ives apparently got into a bit of a spat with one of the developers of uh, Elementary OS because he uh, has a um, GitHub repo that uh, he called Elementary Extras, which is just some extra stuff for Elementary OS. And one of the developers mm-hmm. of Elementary uh, came into the GitHub issue tracker and was like, Please change the name of this. We hold the trademark. We do this. We do that. And then it kind of devolved into a whole thing where uh, Chris actually digged up the trademark application, found out that, no, they, in fact, do not have the trademark. So, uh, yeah, it kind of devolved from there into uh, who said what and Mm -hmm. the name still hasn't changed. But that got him to write the uh, blog posts in question. Can you, uh, because Elementary OS being one of those distributions that charges, or, well, they don't necessarily charge, you can put zero on it, but according to another of the Elementary OS developers, that is tantamount to stealing, which is why I don't use that distro. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the, yeah, he decided to posit the, uh, the question, can you pirate uh, GPL licensed software? Uh, because Elementary is based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu is free uh, to distribute. It's c- completely open Doesn't source. Ubuntu uh, there's quite thing? a lot of GPL like software. They ask for a donation when you download it. Um, yeah, but after it's clearly the fact. labeled. Yes. Yeah. 
uh, elementary, you need to actually type in a zero in the uh, zero. thing. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, apparently that's tantamount to stealing. Uh, but yes, uh, the <laughs> the question still uh, stands. Uh, Zorin OS, elementary OS, if you do share the ISO after you've downloaded, is that piracy? Okay, I went to download Ubuntu, so both of you, <laughs> hush. There it is. That's the first thing you get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've donated I'm, when I've downloaded ISO, I, ISOs from Ubuntu. <laughs> I haven't gone to the Ubuntu Ubuntu website in a long time. I usually go to Shubuntu or Kubuntu. Well, I was just curious. It's like, does <laughs> Ubuntu have that thing when you click download? It gives you the like, hey, do the donation thing, which I'm... Oh, and I'm Ubuntu yeah. Mate. Uh, Ubuntu yeah, Mate does Mate have the you know, donation. When we get around to like pirating After. open source software, what we really want to look at is um, this is something that legitimately does happen, believe it or not, with... Um, open source commercial software mm. when you think about it the big example that i'm talking about is Adore. it's a digital audio workstation that's been available for linux for a long time but you're thinking what, what are you talking about it's available in my linux distribution which it is that's fair enough but if you want some like tech support the first thing the Adour team is going to ask you is like you're running the official build right the ones that we built understandably so However, you have to have a recurring donation. I think there's even an option for a one-time payment. It's like 40 bucks, still cheaper than Reaper, to get that copy. Now, the source is completely free. You can build it yourself. I was building uh, the 7.0 Pre-0 yesterday, playing around with it. And uh, Linux users, this is what we're going to do. We're going to build from source or do what I do, support the project, and get your official binary builds, especially when you need to go, I told you it was broken, um... That's always <laughs> that's always handy to have, but Windows users, Mac users, that is the common complaint that I see showing up on their forums. Is why do I have to pay for this? Which you don't, but if you want the binary, they expect you to give them some coin. Went to the pirate bay. <laughs> I had a curious, and surprisingly, <laughs> Mac versions were up, not Windows. Uh. <laughs> I mean, if, if you spend money to buy a Mac computer, you probably don't have the money to buy the software, so. Is <laughs> that piracy, though? <laughs> Are you free to distribute mm. the binaries? I don't know. That depends on which license Which license do does, which, um, yeah. does Ardor have. Is it Apache or... GPL version two. If it's GPL, then yeah, three. you're free to distribute the binaries. Yeah. Morally, Pedro. So it's not piracy. Pedro. And you can copy and <laughs> hack it. And Outside of the GPL two <laughs> explanation, let's get to what I'm trying to get to here. Morally, is that piracy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, that is uh, th that is very much a use case that is a part of the GPL. Is yes, you can sell it, but the if you are um, providing a GPL licensed software, then the person who already has it is free to distribute it. And at the end of the day, it really mm -hmm. does boil down to, um, you know, you can have open source software and it can be completely commercial. Hi, Red Hat. Um, I had somebody ask me in um, the Linux audio subreddit a couple of days ago, they, they were doing something with like a sequencer or something that they'd created and like, oh, what is the big difference between open source versus commercial. And the guy was rightfully very proud of what he'd created. Not my bag, but, you know, he got me with a question. I'm like, oh, I need to leave comment. And it was just showing the feature list. I'm like, look at all this stuff I do, and my project does it for free versus these other programs that do similar things and are missing features. And he's like, so what makes something professional? And I wrote back, support. Is that 100%? That's mm -hmm. what it is. The reason I run Mixbus 32C over here is I really like Outdoor, but I'm willing to c cut that $300 check because this is Outdoor with a phone number I can call. This isn't the, okay, let's see if I can work up like my thesis here and get it together and um, submit, you know, <laughs> an issue and, and like, oh, you're using it wrong. 
no recourse to that, and rightfully so. It's an open source project. But I like having like, hey, by the way, could you take a look at this? That's worth the money to me. So it's kind of weird like that. What are your yeah. thoughts on this, Jill? Yeah, so um, I don't mind paying a small amount of money to use open source software as long as there's an an easy option uh, to download it for uh, free. Um, I, I think that's... I just, I don't know. It, it, it seems like I, I love donating to these the companies. Like I said, I've, uh, I've donated when I've downloaded, um, ISOs from Ubuntu and Endeavor OS and Garuda Linux. No problem. But it's, it's clearly stated that, you know, and, and clearly visible that you don't have to download it. You don't, you don't have to pay for it to download it. So I guess, but it's hard, yeah, because sometimes companies need to make money and, and they have uh, support that they need to support. But, yeah, this is, I guess, a uh, area. <laughs> for us, I mean, they, definitely for myself, is like pirating software is a very, very foreign concept to me because it's just not available on mm-hmm. Linux. And I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless you want to get that old video game that was only for DOS or Windows. Probably if it's not on GOG or some other store that sells old games, it probably just GOG at this point. Uh Yep. Yeah, pirate it. <laughs> <laughs> that is my one uh thing is like, can you buy it legitimately? No. Pirate it. <laughs> Bold move, gotten. Well, we have <laughs> one of the biggest ways to distribute um, open source projects is through BitTorrent. And in the Linux world, that's not pirating because that's the beauty of open source. We can copy it and trade it with each other and manipulate it and make our own fork of it. <laughs> that's the I beauty. Mean, GPL or it. not, it comes down to like morals. You know, we were all <laughs> filthy uh, 10, 12, 13 year old pirates and... Um, <laughs> that, that was definitely a thing. Leech the wares. Here's the thing, though. You <laughs> grow out of that. And once you have the means and whereabouts to support the projects that you like, you should do it. That's something I've seen. It's very sad. Some old people my age and mm-hmm. like, you haven't grown out of that. I'm like, well, where, where's the beef? Uh, I download a car. I'm like, you're just being cheap, man. You're just being cheap. And this goes for media, too. Uh, I've had more than one pe- person roll their eyes at me like why do you subscribe to every streaming service and like because i gotta put my money where my mouth is because i did -hmm. the whole thing like if you give me an option to pay for it and i can watch it legally why because i want if i like something enough to subscribe to a service i kind of want that thing to keep you know being a thing exactly (laughs) yeah Uh, and you know that's like well i've always downloaded this show it went on off the air you think (laughs) um Oh. There you go. But yeah, I I'm a patron of tons of projects. Ah. You know, like like the yes. the Gramp and Kitta, Krita and Inkscape and you know, so many different projects and different distros and I'm I'm proud of that, but that's optional. That's an optional thing yeah, to do. And stuff like Patreon <laughs> is great if there's someone out there that's doing something you like and you've been using their stuff even if it's been for free but you really like what they've done and you want to keep using the stuff that they do yeah give them a dollar a month on patreon or another service that they take it makes a difference it genuinely makes a difference trust me and having that little bit like known like okay well that and take those dollars and that's going to come in every month and that that's like one of the downsides like a one-time paypal donation which is great which i i always line up paypal stuff with like remembering to subscribe to someone on twitch which i will forget mm-hmm. to not out of uh, <laughs> negligence I was like i'll try to type some oh it's inside i thought it was this oh here i'm so again there we go anyway let's talk about everyone's favorite driver <laughs> in tfs yeah, not NTFS 3G. No, no, no. This is the new one, which uh, apparently has already drawn the ire of one Linus Torvalds. Uh, <laughs> specifically, it's the Paragon software um, patch that Linus has been pushing. He's like, come on, just, you know, submit that so we can get that into the kernel. Because it is 
so much better than the current one, the current NTFS 3G for comparison, will cause your entire system to lock up if you're writing a bunch of files. And until that copy or that move is done, it, the system will remain unresponsive. Pedro a single, gets uh, hard a half here. Inch. Listen, I'm just going to give you, here's a copy and paste, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the um, the driver from Paragon is actually considerably better, and um, the way that they submitted it wasn't the best, because they used uh, GitHub's uh, GUI web version uh, of the pull requests to send the pull request, <laughs> and that apparently strips out some very good to have things and introduces I, a lot of uh, have sympathy for them because <laughs> I, I understand how to use Git enough to get something done pun intended but I was trying to do something you know several months back that was slightly more advanced than just my standard you know Venn smash type thing I went searching for that first two pages of Google consist of nothing but people telling me how to do it through the web interface uh <laughs> no <laughs> honestly you know i even i've kind of uh forgot that github has a web interface because i just keep it out of my mind <laughs> just been using git for so many years and terminal like why but i understand the need you know for for new users and whatnot <laughs> and for first time submitters which was the case yes. so yes the the, the patch is in <laughs> Tentatively, uh, and will be available for the 515 release, which will be coming in, uh, well, the, the merge window is now open, so if you have patches, submit them now. This is true. Now, Paragon, you know, they've kind nice. of struggled to get to grips with Linux kernel development. They want to do a good, no matter what you think about them. Mm. They're trying. They just don't know. So they're going through the onboarding yeah. process, if you will. And Linus has been kind enough to cut them quite a bit of slack, you know? Aside from just telling them don't use the GitHub interface on the web for merging, um, he kind of couldn't help himself. Uh, he's like, you know what? I'll let it slide this time. It's not going to be a problem. But Aww. he did have to drop in right at the end. He's like, that request should have been signed, PGP, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to be I, able to I'm... run that hash back to you, please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to using Paragon's new NTFS driver in on Linux. This is so wonderful because the old NTFS driver was horribly slow at writing and sometimes reading as well. <laughs> it was uh, very slow at reading and writing to NTFS and just has had performance issues its whole life. So this is a big deal. We're finally getting a good NTFS driver on Linux. <laughs> it's very nice. Why would you ever try to copy that much data, Pedro? I, here's what I have. I have zero trust in that driver. Not to say it's not functional. Maybe if I had to read something, I would never try to write something with it. It is functional. It meets the definition of functional. And say you have mm -hmm. someone who has a broken laptop that they had to use, like, please save... Okay, what happened? It, it, it no worky. Okay, so you take the hard drive out uh, and you plug it into one of those SATA to USB adapters, plug it into the big honking uh, PC that you have on your desk, and you do the data recovery. So at least they have that. Uh, you mean try to really kill it? NTFS 3G is bad. It, again, it locks up my entire box. Ryzen 7 3700X. Mm. Completely unresponsive <laughs> for as long as that copy is going. Great. <laughs> Not curses. No cursing allowed. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, this is exciting. This is Not Curses. Not Curses is a library which facilitates complex text-based user interface interfaces on modern terminal emulators. It's so cool. It supports vivid colors, multimedia, Unicode, threads, and all to you, you know, whatever your heart is content with. And there's so many things you can do with N curses, not N curses, excuse me, not curses, which you cannot do with classic <laughs> N curses. <laughs> 
uh, like it has lots of visual features, including images. You can add images, fonts, video, high contracts, text, sprites, and even transparent regions. And it's really cool because it even, not curses, even has its own version of NeoFetch called NC NeoFetch. So imagine Which is installing very a. <laughs> yeah, it is actually, <laughs> but very cool nonetheless. So imagine installing a distro in in uh, CLI, and then it gets to hardware detection, and a NeoFetch screen comes up, or NeoFetch like screen comes up, and shows you uh, your um, some of the hardware it has detected, or in in your installation, a video is played. Uh, with the built-in audio video player, NC player. Now it's mm-hmm. it's kind of looking like your GUI installer, isn't it? <laughs> but this is so cool <laughs> and so so retro. I love it. And just think what the the classic uh, Cle Debian installer would look like with this. <laughs> that is, uh, I actually built it and ran. They have the um, not curses <laughs> demo. You just run that to see what's up, and it is impressive what it can do like all the sprite rendering they have uh, a mario and um chun li just uh doing their own uh sprite animations in the terminal it's like very good very good <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> it uh it would it would if it weren't for some of the dependencies because it does have quite a few of them but it would make for a very mm-hmm. nice if you're just doing the whole oh yeah live entirely off the terminal thing you pair tmux with this and you probably could mm. <laughs> oh, very maybe, nice. maybe that should be well, a new challenge doesn't... for you pedro let's see how many minutes you can live off the terminal this week oh yes <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was uh, never library... really into that. I used the terminal because I recognize its usefulness, but given the option, I will use the GUI because that. that, that <laughs> I'm sorry, we're we're in 2021 now. <laughs> oh, well, this li- the not curses library actually doesn't replace um, the end curses, so you still have to have end curses installed. But um, everyone is saying on the thread that it's a lot faster than the classic end curses, which is really, really cool. Hmm. They've improved it. <laughs> and there's a really good video you can watch of all the different things you can do with um, not curses yep. in our link below. There will just be <laughs> no cursing allowed during that. So we got something about RSS. What's yeah. RSS? I'm young and I don't know these glyph letters. Oh, did no one pick <laughs> No one did. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Oops! Uh oh. Uh, I can, I don't actually remember what the um, acronym RSS stands for. Guard is a simple feed reader which supports RSS, Atom, JSON, and many web-based feed services because that's what it says it does. Yes, there's uh, the, that one I downloaded because uh, they have an app image. Actually, they have two app images. They have one with a web renderer, so that it does. Mm. You can get a preview, like web view and everything, directly from the application itself. Or you can get the version without, which is like a third of the size. So, I guess we know who's using Ceph. Uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. It is actually. It does a very good job. It supports both. Uh, exist already existing uh, RSS aggregator APIs like your uh, Gmail or Google Reader um, and uh, Tiny RSS and a few others. Or you could just set up your own. You just start the application, start with a local profile and just add your own RSS feeds to it. Yeah, hmm. that good. <laughs> Does it do anything special? I, immediately I scroll down on the GitHub and I'm like, what is this made in Rust or what? Uh, no, it's all C++. Uh, no. <laughs> it's C++ and HTML for the uh, web rendering. Yeah, then. So I guess <laughs> that's the uh, broader conversation <laughs> is who uses RSS readers in 2021 outside of like a curiosity, maybe? I don't know. Most browsers have well, an RSS reader I'm still reader using built tiny, tiny. Them. Yeah, and I'm still using Tiny Tiny RSS. I love that one, and I was so happy to hear that uh, this imports from an OPML from that. 
And I was also trying to remember the meaning of RSS because the classic, <laughs> and, and then I, I just looked it up, really simple syndication. That's it. I never can remember that. Really simple yeah, no. syndication. <laughs> <laughs> syndication. But it's funny because if you, you go to the RSS wiki, it says RSS um, RDF site summary is, is the new term, <laughs> the, the new definition of it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> we got to redefine what it means, man. You know, we got to make it hip for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like GIMP. Call it whatever you, know, the you want. Of the Acronyms name. on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, like Pedro's saying, the app image works really great. And I was happy that it imports from Tiny Tiny RSS and Nextcloud News, which I use, and Gmail. So that was that was really awesome. Right on. And thank you for the app image. Thought we'd throw it in the notes <laughs> cool. and give everyone a look at it. Thanks to our Theron who popped that in there. Now, something that has plagued Yay. most of us for a long time is Google Docs. Now, we've become overly dependent on Google Docs, which, hey, what, what are you going to do? It would be very unhealthily. It so. would be very, very interesting <laughs> if G Docs died before. So I'm like, whoa, hmm. <laughs> Want to play some video games? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, something that's bothered me yeah. with Google Docs for the longest amount of time is having to look at it because there's no no dark mode, uh, dark mode <laughs> right. at all. No, there is on Android. If you have a recent version of Android, I'm like, oh, finally I can stare at it. And I have a show notes monitor over here, which are just toned all the way down, which makes everything look fairly unreadable. And the one thing I've always been on the lookout for is a way to get Google Docs in dark mode working with the correct colors. Because I know there's the plugins. Aww. Somebody's going, you use Chrome. Hey, you're a horrible person. You need to use Moonfox or whatever. I don't know. Um, but after they get to know that, they're like, we'll just go to get the app extension. Like That doesn't work with Google Docs. But Jill's going to tell you about something, a little hack that works with Google Docs and yeah. everything else. So now you can, Vin. This is just so exciting. So you can force dark mode on all websites using Chrome. Yay. And natively, too. All you have to do is type Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags in Chrome's Omnibox. Search for dark mode in the search box and force dark mode for web contents comes up. And you can change it from the default mode to... Gosh, there were there are actually several options there. Yeah, um, they have a few. Just change it to enabled. Yeah. Just use the regular enabled one. Just enabled. Yeah. I, <laughs> I know I tried the selective image inversion, and that was interesting. <laughs> but, but just use the, the default enabled. <laughs> and this is really awesome because, you know, normally I, I use Firefox to browse in the dark with the dark reader add-on, which I really love. But it's sure nice to have this available in Chrome now. Uh, natively and to use with Google Docs, which we use for our show notes. Yay! No, I do want to go ahead and say, <laughs> yeah. save us that comment. This has been an option inside of Chromium and inside of Chrome for a few minutes, like a year or two. Problem is, mm -hmm. last time I tried this, it was dumpster fire. I mean, it oh. everything became interesting, as in, well, that's useless, but it. Hmm. I guess maybe if I it looks yeah, dark. Technically <laughs> technically true. Uh but just out of curiosity, I tried it again. Um that's why I wanted to throw this in the notes. I like two or three days ago. I went in there and I'm like, oh let's see if oh it fixed Google Docs. Now I can use Google Docs in dark mode. Yes, that made me very happy. That was my big life hack. I always wanted goth mode for Google Docs. Now setting it up it's really easy and it's going to work for most everything everything that i typically browse i'd say about 97.3 percent but when it's terra bad it's still laughably terrible bad some things catch it up linuxmusicians.com <laughs> try to read that have some fun um test your eyesight out <laughs> Maybe that's one of those websites that the selective options are probably a uh, good idea. Possibly. And another thing, <laughs> yeah. that gave, this is just my life now. The other thing that made gave me the big happies, you can do this on mobile too. 
Okay. Yeah, this might be the <laughs> thing that makes me go back to Chrome because Trader. Oh, I don't need uh, external um, extensions to <laughs> that may or may not be looking at every single website that I go to. Yeah, let let's at least I already know Google's already mm-hmm. looking at everything that I do. So, uh. <laughs> so if you want to look at everything we do, you can become a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That was the closest thing to a segue I've dropped in months. Um, <laughs> we put out crazy business model. Just do the show for free. And if you like it, kick us some coin and we try to do bigger and better shows. But if you're a patron, speaking of more, this is just the middle of the show. If you want the beginning, if you want the end, we got a pre-show and an after show. Because that's kind of always been important to me to stick around, learn about the community, talk to them, and we engage that way. But I make that available in a new, higher quality 96k mp3 you get a custom rss feed as a patron so you get any bonus content which we also do on uh, saturday pre pre super shows and that's an extra hour if you want to find out how the sausage is made what we got planned what we're working on for upcoming i don't know um misfittery maybe i'll say that's how you can do that we make the video version also available live and uncut for patrons so thank you for that also, everybody like, hitting us up on Twitch, man. Twitch subs. Get a couple of those. Yay. Those are <laughs> very much appreciated as well. Thank you. And both of you, <laughs> both of you wild, wacky, crazy people can hop into our Discord. Where we're at the other six days of the week, having conversations. Don't mm-hmm. be terrified because we're in Discord along with everybody else having it out and uh, discussing strange things like, uh, what what was the topic uh, before the show? Uh mm, Emacs OS. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. system E. <laughs> system E. <laughs> True conversation that was going on. And very, very. I still need a distro that comes with that out of the box. <laughs> Interesting collection of people uh, in our Discord. About six or seven people. Plus, we have IRC that's always open for live shows. Come chat with us in there because we're that's also bridged to our Discord on the live channel, so we can have conversations. And I'm sure somebody is dying to tell us about Matrix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I ran across that. Probably. I ran across that. <laughs> somebody had released a chat client. Uh oh, another Discord uh open source type thing. First comment on Reddit. So Matrix is the bu- <laughs> <laughs> Matrix is uh, Matrix is a new Arch Linux. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> now that uh, now that the Steam Deck is coming out or the Game Gear is coming out with Arch Linux. What I'm saying and what I'm saying, Matrix is a fantastic <laughs> tool. It is, but the fan base is getting a little like you're chasing off people by doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just throwing that out there now <laughs> let's get into a slice of pie for this week ah, a classic pie. pumpkin pie yeah it looks like, like somebody uh, <laughs> had the one piece and they left uh, the other piece for the guest yeah it looks like someone yeah. already jammed their fingers into a that particular slice that's why it's left <laughs> it over yeah. right. Thumb, <laughs> thumbprint thumbprint <laughs> pinky print oh, would you mess with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> depending on how hungry i was and how sweet it was mm. i might take a bite to go to, uh no i need to cover in whiskey <laughs> <laughs> i might try it <laughs> i might absolutely it's try you, it the one thing you get him to eat <laughs> or the whiskey out of it. The one thing I wouldn't necessarily cover with whiskey, although in a pinch I would do that too, not to drink it but to clean it out, is an old, old computer. And maybe, just maybe, uh, you've seen all of those other people that have been using the Raspberry Pi to drive old machines or completely replace the CPU on those old machines. Well, in this one, it's, it's even less than that. The Pi... Here, for the Motorola 6800 Educational Computer Board, is a dumb terminal slash front end for, you know, the most powerful computer is actually the one that's just getting the information uh, to and from the uh, weaker one. And it does that via uh, an RS-232 hat. Along with the 12 volt rail, it's actually powering the education board via the 12 volt rail. So, 
There you go. That, that, that is a <laughs> multiplication table of oopsies with his blue wipers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ben, did you ever use one of these in schools? I, I had years ago, like, oh gosh, when I was in junior high. Oh no, they they were I phasing remember. these out with the um, horse buggies by the time I was. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, these were kind of the early predecessor to the Raspberry Pi, actually. <laughs> so, but it's, yeah, it's really cool the 68k computers as you know you've got your apple macintosh next computers um atari st computers some so many computers were made with the uh 68k chip so this was a great learning tool especially for those that are my age <laughs> it was mm -hmm. a great year learning tool <laughs> in junior high because we had all those things we had amigas <laughs> you know apples commodore 64s <sighs> yeah, this particular one is from 1981. So yeah, it's it's coming on. And the, seriously, the I, I very much approve. <laughs> I'm not at a yeah. loss for words, but uh, I I was going to say it was effing crazy without the um, <laughs> amelioration of the uh, swear word there. But yeah, no. Just have the one thing, and you can use a Raspberry Pi to, you know, connect your keyboard to it, connect a display to. It is just a terminal that you then use a terminal emulator to uh, <laughs> go via serial to the uh, the 68K. No, 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 no. That's... Yeah. <laughs> this, this is ridiculous. This what you is need brilliant. to do is use Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4. Power your stream deck like a normal person, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> the eight gig version. Eight gig version too. Yes. That, 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 that's so those button pushes are like extra snappy. <laughs> also, might have a little latency curve. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so I ran across this uh, years and years ago. Not like probably five or six years ago. Somebody gave me a. Nixie tube clock that counted down like that. Thanks. I try to be, I, I get weird <laughs> stuff like that sometimes. Like I was thinking of you, like, what do you think of me? Uh, <laughs> Hipster. Yeah, <right? laughs> it's like this. I, I eventually <laughs> took it out of the box and plugged it. It was a nice one too. I mean, it was a bespoke type deal and I'm like, ah, that's neat. And I let it run for whatever. And um, eventually, one of the tubes burnt down. I went to went to this web zone. I'm like, how much? Did I know? Oh no! Well, that tube stand burnt out, and um, put it back in the box and never be seen again. <laughs> They've gotten cheaper, but I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, like new match tested tubes can still be kind of pricey. But mm -hmm. if you know you've been longing for a Nixie tube clock that, let's say, was also atomic. And man, I got the project for you. <laughs> I do. This is the Raspberry Pi atomic <laughs> clock with a Nixie tube display. I mean, <laughs> come on, why not? That that that's a that's, that's a so humble cool. brag right there. You know, <laughs> like oh, that's a nice clock. It's atomic powered. Eh? Eh? Is that accuracy? But yeah, this strip that was radioactive, probably. By the way. Uh, maybe not. Uh, doo -doo -doo. This is just walking through, just getting everything set up. I had, there it is. Laser, the laser plus physics package. <laughs> Those are words you like to read. Amazing. <laughs> I think this is just very fun. It goes through the milling and, you know, GPS, because that's the thing we're going to be tangoing with. And it is just neat. There'll be a link to this along with everything in the show notes. I just wanted to give this a mention just in case. Maybe you're never planning on doing anything like this. It's just a fun read. And of course, that's how we calibrate things, right, Pedro? <laughs> I mean, that's one way to check if the um, claim voltage look is speak, actually what you're getting. The true, true. Yeah. California doesn't have a reliable power grid. Um, well, yeah. Those that rely on PG&E, yes. <laughs> there it is. There is a mention about the amount of like voltage that you got to throw at an XC tube to maintain a constant display. So if you're going to be trying to running in a lower power mode, you'll end up with a display kind of like this. If you look under the 27, it's like, oh, huh? 
what numbers are going on mm-hmm. right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just a fun read. And I wanted to give it a mention. Um, have you? That's awesome. No, no, he's got the laser beams. Now he just needs some zip ties and some sharks. <laughs> what about, well, I tried to get Pedro to <laughs> buy a Nixie clock kit. <laughs> Like, no. Oh yeah, I looked at that. Even the LED Nixie tubes, like the fake Nixie mm-hmm. tubes, those are stupidly mm-hmm. expensive. That's like sixty pounds per tube. Come on. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> no. it, it's got to be as expensive as my Macintosh tube app. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> like vacuum tubes, I've watched a couple of things on. You know, you can usually get depending on how big of a Nixie tube you want to get, uh, like a matched. Sets uh, usually they're gonna be coming from Russia. I guess why? Because they're still made there. Um, but you're gonna be like like thirty eight to forty mm-hmm. bucks. So I mean that's not bad. Yeah. But when you need like thirteen of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and you can't really do a full display with one Nixie tube. I mean you could, but you'd burn it out very quickly. Well, I mean I guess the, it's <laughs> kind of a analogous to no one thinks about buying a. Twenty-two dollar knock to a fan. And do you need to buy four? Like, whoa! Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I spent a hundred dollars on knock to a fan, so you got three. <laughs> done. That. So, if you want to get in touch with us, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com. We like to read your emails, your thoughts, your hints, your suggestions. Just anything you want to shoot in our direction. Maybe you got a project to work on. Maybe you want to come on the show. We're open to that idea. It'll be an extra test for Mr. Jitseeks, but just head over to linuxemcast.com, fill out the contact form. That is how you get in touch with us. That way, the three of us will see the message and um, we might even write you back. Guaranteed. What do we have this week, Pedro? How do you even pronounce that name? Where do mm-hmm. I even start with that? Um, <laughs> Yellow MTC? I, unless you yeah. want to go Y-A-O-M-T-C and... Uh, they uh, yeah, are yo, asking a question. MTC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could be. Yay, yo. <laughs> hey, man, don't, don't talk and, uh, about fan club. Are... Can't talk about that first rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first rule, yes. Uh, but they're asking, picked up mm-hmm. an Intensity Pro 4K a couple of months ago. Try it and fail to get it working on either Arch or Ubuntu, LTS or 2004. So uh, they did run the gamut. Well, you know, hey, uh, I, I, thought it I might... appreciate somebody telling me they're a new Linux user right out of the gate. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thought it might have been a hardware issue, so eventually their tech support had me send it to them. About a month later, I heard back from them. Uh, they had it working just fine on Windows, but were not able to test on Linux. Apparently, that team has no Linux machines to test with. Ven? <laughs> Pedro? <Yeah. laughs> Yes. <laughs> Did you not deal with one uh, black magic about a uh, capture card of some description? For over no. a year? <laughs> yes. About it running on Linux or about to conduct not a, doing terribly well at it? We're going to do a reading comprehension and uh, troubleshooting session with Pedro. He just doesn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> so what is our gentlewoman's or gentleman's issue? Because... The first thing we're seeing, okay, Arch or Ubuntu? And it didn't what work. versions? The Arch, Arch version. That's that. That's uh, the one. Ubuntu LTS. Good question, but 2004 seems to be a specific version, which didn't work either. Now, what would lead you? What would what would be the first thread there? I was like, hmm, why didn't it work? Uh, they didn't have the kernel headers installed. <laughs> or I could, I'm going to say with Arch it probably wouldn't compile kernel was too new probably yeah <laughs> which is like a big segment in the last black magic video <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the thing um, doesn't it compile with 5.11 5.10 it might do 5.11 but I wouldn't push it Okay, because uh, 2004 comes with 5.11, so... That is our other clue. Now, there's two problems to solve. Arch wasn't going to happen no matter what you did unless you downgraded the kernel. The Ubuntu came with an older kernel, which was compatible, but yes, Pedro, uh, definitely didn't have the kernel headers or 
the um, what else do you need? And just your build environment, you know, build essentials. Uh, uh, the, don't they come with the debs in the folder when you download the no. drivers? And you extract it, and there's debs in the folder, or oh, am I yeah, thinking yeah, of other yes, drivers for other packages there? There's Debian yes. and RPMs, then there's a Tartar GS ads for, you know, the Susies and Arches. However, I am willing to bet, I'm willing to bet one Pedro that the problem was this, they plugged it in, cut it on, and it didn't work. <laughs> Which I guess is a reasonable expectation on Linux. <laughs> First segment in the last video was called RTFM. I'm not going to tell you what that stood for, but it's a very, very important segment in the video. So, yeah, that, that that's the whole thing. Uh, they wrote in and uh, when you're dealing with like capture hardware or just specialized hardware in general, do yourself a favor. And I am not surprised by black magic. By, they plugged it into a box, cut it on. That's all they care about. Like it powers on, it runs here. Take it back. So, uh, yeah, just, just make sure. And, and that, that's one of the reasons I made that video the way I made it was if you miss something like this, you clearly didn't watch it. <laughs> Either that or, you know, video is not, not the uh, format for you to learn things. Which for me, it isn't. Really? <laughs> Videos are background noise. If you want me to learn something, give me a read. That's why on LinuxGameCast.com, <laughs> I did a very long, detailed explanation with goat snippets and everything that you need in order yeah. to do it. <laughs> then we'll still have the person. Like, I don't understand. Why doesn't it work? Mm. Anyway, that's your problem. <laughs> uh, read the manuals, kids. I think that's going to be the moral of the story. <laughs> But we got to bounce out of here. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. And uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. With uh, no telling. Maybe maybe Steve will remember to pick up some uh, proper temperature colored lights like I told him to last week. Huh? Maybe. Steve, <laughs> 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 <But, I've> Congrats. <laughs> <laughs>. No, that, that really is something that we're spoiled now. You plug something into a Linux laptop or a Linux desktop yeah, and you go, plug oh, and look, play. it, it <laughs> works. <laughs> and if it doesn't, then you go, ooh, I have something to do. <laughs> How neat. <laughs> Exciting. Let me figure this out. Troubleshoot. Well, I'm going to be yeah. doing the polar opposite <laughs> with this EVGA capture card. I'm like, all right, everyone, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you VC compliant and everything. Oh no, maybe I'll drag out like um, slide rulers and stuff and like get some graphing paper and set it down <laughs> on the desk to get it lined up. We're getting ready to install Linux drivers. <laughs> Bye everyone. Have fun. Enjoy the rest Bye -bye. of your week. You're shiny. And go watch Star Trek and celebrate 55 years of Star Trek. <laughs>